Let's welcome attorney and co-director of the Dream Action Coalition, Cesar Vargas, to the docket with a big congratulations to you, Counselor. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm so proud to welcome you to the bar. Well, you know, I still have to do the official ceremony, so once I get that... That's the I easy can... part. You took the exam. Well, the, the exam, but the four-year fight, they almost get that pretty much. Didn't think it was going to come. You know, it's finally here. So, yeah, the big fight is done, but, you know, until I actually get this wearing ceremony, it's, that's where, like, you know, Cesar Vargas Esquire. Absolutely. When did the fight begin? You said four years ago. When did you take the bar? Well, I think when I applied to law school, you know, there was always a question about my immigration status. There was a question about whether I'm going to, I would be able to practice law. Uh, but I did it because I wanted to push myself. I wanted to uh, break the boundaries that were there that people, you know, didn't know whether undocumented immigrants could practice law. So, you know, I graduated. I took the bar exam. Still didn't know whether I was going to be admitted or not. Uh, and in 2012, I submitted my application. And I said, you know what? We need to try and we need to let New York confront the issue. Uh, both. Uh, in, in, the, in the immigration level, but also in the personal level of what it means to be an attorney. Well, I can't imagine even putting the effort to go to law school, not even knowing if I would be allowed to practice law. That's, that's incredible. Let's, tell me about, I know you're part of DACA. So just explain that to me and the significance in terms of practicing law, your activism, put this all together for us. Well, DACA is significant because for the first time the president issued uh, a, an executive uh, pretty much action to grant deportation relief to dreamers, to young people who came here when they were little. I came here when I was five years old. Uh, and I think what DACA did pro was provide not only a work authorization and opportunity to get a driver's license, but the opportunity to feel like a New Yorker. Like when I got my driver's license because of DACA, I you know, there was a moment I was like, I love being a New York. I right. have my New York ID. So DACA allowed that possibility to be able to contribute to the country, the ability to, to be part of New York. And most importantly, you know, not having to worry about the shadow of being deported. And let me just clarify, DACA is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and it, their partner is Deferred Action for Parents. And so now you're, you came with your mom. I came with my mom after my father passed away, and for her, you know, her only objective was to make sure that we had the American dream, that we had the opportunity to live a better life than we had in Mexico. And you were a part of DACA after you took the bar, right? So yeah. you did all of this just having illegal status. Well, you know, what, what we did after I graduated law school, I didn't know whether I could work because I didn't have work permit, and I didn't know whether I could be practicing law because I didn't know the issue there. Uh, but we got together with dreamers from across the country and we were pushing the president. You know, th the president didn't get up one day and say, hey, I'm going to do this because <laughs> I care. He was pushed by the community, sure. he was pushed by the dreamers. And we were successful in, and for the first time for the president to issue such significant deportation relief for community. So I was involved actively with amazing other leaders who, who contributed to this campaign to get DACA, to get DAPA for our parents. And most important is to really fight for our families. And as a lawyer, it's a about that, fighting for your community, fighting for your country. Where does law play into the activism? It, was it almost a symbolic gesture to get the law degree, or is it going to be part of your activism going forward? Well, what I did learn throughout this four years waiting for the court uh, with my lawyers at Latino Justice, uh, it was, I realized that you need a license to practice law. You need a license to represent clients, but you don't need a license to fight for your community. You don't need a license to fight for your family. And that's, I think, that's the most significant why it's central to continue to change outdated immigration systems, outdated laws that no longer serve our community. In the article the New York Times, they congratulated you first before I got to, you said, I think this is really uh, great, uh, I'm sorry, that it's, go it's going to extend to other policies, a great momentum, I can't read my handwriting, that will extend to other policies. What policies are you referring to? Well, it, it opened the door, not just in New York, to establish such significant, that the court says that regardless of your immigration status, if you have met all the requirements for to be a lawyer, it doesn't matter whether you're undocumented or not. It, it only matters that whether you're willing to represent your clients in the, the most passionate and selfless way. So that go, opens the door to all the professions. If you're willing to be a, a satisfy all the requirements to be a dentist, to be a doctor, to yeah, be a I was plumber, thinking the same then exactly. that opens right. the door to other possibilities that no matter what, of what the American dream, if you work hard, you'll get it there. And I think that's a significant present across the country. Now, of course, we have to talk about the politics of this because I'm wondering, actually, let me uh, answer a question. We got a question for you from Christopher Smith, asked via Twitter. 
does he have concerns about immigration being swept aside in the midst of a presidential campaign? Now, I want you to answer that keeping in mind, because I know one of your colleagues at Dream, uh, Ryan Campbell, he wrote right. this article about when Hillary went to Nevada, Hillary Clinton, sorry, <laughs> she went to Nevada and she spoke and it sounded like your organization had a lot of hope that Hillary Clinton was going to keep immigration at the forefront at the campaign. But Christopher Smith is wondering maybe it's going to be swept aside. No, I think we're going to continue the moment because DACA again it was pushed by the community, by the by the candidates and president. Pres the president Obama took action because he cared about the Latino vote, he cared about the independent vote and other communities. So for us. We don't know what president is going to win, but what we do know is that we're going to keep pushing for each president to remind them that you don't take uh, for granted any constituency, and that we're going to continue. And immigration and DACA is significant. So we're going to keep push pushing President Obama to take action now and protect more families, but we're also going to keep pushing Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Jeb Bush, Mark Rue, you name it. For us, it's not about All this. All 1,500 of them. All, All of especially them. Especially the Republicans. So especially gonna... the Republicans. Exactly. Okay, so what is your opinion of, I'm just... Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio because they have at least connection to the Latino community. Well, just speaking Spanish is not going to get you a Latino vote. I love that. Simple, That's simple great. Simple as that. So for them, they need to make sure that they are setting for policies sure. that is going to protect our communities, whether education, immigration, housing. So just saying. Well, hola in on a Facebook or YouTube video is not going to be enough. And a last name, Latino last name, is not going to get Marco Rubio the Latino vote. Vo voters crave authentic politicians if that is even possible those two words to get <laughs> those two words together absolutely well and I just also want to point out you're the first in New York but you're only the third in the country so in so yes we have uh, and we have other law students who are graduating in across the country not just in California Florida New York but we have in Texas we have in Georgia we have in other states where it's not as easy as you would expect so and we also have other professions and there's dreamers who are graduating from medical school so we have the opportunity to expand what took place in New York, what took place in Florida and California to other professions and to, again, it really is about bringing the American dream. For me, the first call that I made about your mom. this was my mom. Of course. Was my mom. You know, she sure. brought me here to give me a better life. And when I called her, we said, Mom, we did it. We did it. It's your American dream to see me as a lawyer is getting closer. And she cried, but it was joy. It was tears of happiness that, you know, for once she will be able to proudly say, uh, my son is a lawyer. So that was me the most significant because she is my hero. She is my inspiration and the source of courage that I have gotten throughout. Well, you're definitely making me proud to be a lawyer, says our Vargas. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Folks, have you checked out our show page? For previous episodes and tons of clips, go to msnbc.com forward slash the dash docket. Next, we will catch you up on some legal news in and around the courthouse. This is the docket. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.